Grab your emotional support boulder and Because today we're talking about Rick and Morty Season 4, Episode 5, Rattlestar Rick Lactica. I've got to say, I think of all the episodes, this is the most easy to say title. Like this one, you can actually say, I could remember that. I didn't have to look it up or ask. Not uh, uh, Rick Die, Rick Pete, Edge of to Morty. Yeah, it's no one crew over the crew cruise, Morty. I may have cut around it a bit, but at least three out of four of the episodes so far has been us being like, because today we're discussing, fuck, what's this episode called? <laughs> Yeah, but it's so funny when we do that. It's not on us that we can't remember the fucking... Oh, yeah, no, what you is can't... It? One crew over the crew coos, Morty? <laughs> okay, you just remembered it. You are invalidating your own point. Claw and Hoarder Spectral Rictums Morty. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, here's the thing. Here's why I remember it. Because when I edit, it's like it kind of gets beaten into my brain. Anyway, we're going to be discussing the Snake Hitler stuff. So... First off, one thing I want to say, very surprised they went with time travel. I thought that this would be a thing that Rick never learns time travel. I thought a running thing about him as a person is he can never go back. He's never figured out time travel. I know I hadn't even thought about that, but you have a very good point there. There was an interview a while ago that I we might have actually discussed on this podcast where Dan Harmon basically talked about how he didn't want time travel in the show at all. I could just be making that up. Do either of you remember that? Well, no. I think what he said is, like, unless it's really funny. So I guess this was what they used it on. So th this episode has been being kicked around for at least a year and a half now, according to uh, the writers on Twitter. I wonder if that's why they haven't done it yet, is because time travel is was a no-go for the show. It's a good question. Either way, I did not even realize that they had never done time travel before when I was watching this. The closest they've come is uh, the first episode of season two, where time got split. What about the first episode of, of the series where Rick goes into the portal when Mo Morty's legs are fucking broken? And he spends like an eternity on this happy planet. I think that was more time dilation. The concept of how time moves at different speeds relative to each individual so relative to the camera and morty crying in agony on the ground it was like five seconds relative to rick time was moving at a different speed for him so he was there for a while yeah all right let's start with joke of the episode because i have one take it away fearless leader the basketball court thing where uh, Jerry, he says some sort of racial smack talk, and then the dude's like, hey, we try to keep that talk off the court. Why? I thought this was just how you talk on the court. Well, yeah, but now it's everywhere. So we try <laughs> to keep it off of the court. Yeah. <laughs> that was a very funny and very real joke. Mine is a similar in theme joke, but it's not the same one. It's when they arrive at the snake planet, and he says, wow, 11 million snakes on the brink of war over race imagine being a racist snake hey snake i hate you because you're a different color i was just like okay i okay i love the commentary they're making here i guess the impression it gives me is rick is so fucking out of touch with humanity that he doesn't realize that that's what humans do he may just like so not pay attention to the world because he's caught up in his own shit <laughs> i don't even know because that, yeah that's... I, I don't know what kind of joke they were going there I mean, I think the joke is racism is stupid. Whoa, fucking Rick and Morty taking a hard stance. <laughs> yeah, it's real courageous of the writer's room. <laughs> this wasn't ha-ha funny, but in retrospect, I thought it was funny. When the snake's interpreter and the snake from Earth start a love affair, <laughs> and all the other snakes are just watching them, just like, uh... Oh, God, there was some really funny shit in this episode. I would go so far as to say that... This episode's B story is the best B story we've had all season. Yes, hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, I'd, I would agree there. Also because it ties back in, like, really well. Uh, your guys' jokes of the episode. Brandon, you said yours. Honestly, right now I'm trying to, like, rewatch this and remember. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Toby. Put, put your fucking headphones in. I don't want to hear. We can't have the audio of the episode in the goddamn background. Well, I'm not going to say shit <laughs> while I'm fucking... Toby, this is a podcast. You have to say shit. 
I did also like the joke of, where's Jerry? Maybe he's having an affair. And they all laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that one. That was good. That one was very good. Um, oh, okay. Here's a joke that I really liked. Where Rick fucking animates Jerry's consciousness in like a weird, like melted Jerry head for long enough so that he could say like 10 words on the phone and, and then, then threaten and then to take dies. over this planet in the yeah. process. <laughs> I will eat your world. Jerry, my dad's here. Is that what they call it? Ew. I guess. Maybe clitorises are just tiny planets. I don't know anything about girls. <laughs> That might be the first truthful thing you've said on this podcast. I have a fucking joke for you. The fucking end of the episode where Jerry literally crashes a plane instead of accepting help and kills solid 300 people, at least. Yeah, what's his plan? Like, he grabs onto the outside of a plane, and then what? How the fuck is he gonna get inside? Even worse, the bottom of the plane. (laughs) Oh, I I know one. Some are yelling, no one chokes me without my consent. (laughs) (laughs) So Morty sends a snake back to the snake planet to give them hope of him return. Like, that was one thing I didn't quite buy, where it's like, he feels guilty enough to send a similar looking snake back to snake world. There's a bit of cognitive dissonance there of, so this is an entire planet of developed snakes who have developed a civilization, but he assumes that they won't be able to tell the difference when he sends back just a normal (laughs) snake from earth with a pattern crudely drawn on its side. And it somehow worked. I believe that much, and it seems like the snakes were under the impression that it got abducted by aliens and then reintroduced, like, sort of as a sleeper agent. Oh, the way I saw it was, like, they were, like, doing Arrival. The whole thing from Arrival where it's, like, we need the linguist to help us uh, communicate with this alien snake. I haven't seen that movie, but uh, that's honestly probably closer to what it is. Although in Arrival, Amy Adams does not fuck the aliens. Well, on camera. Fair. (laughs) Rule 34, guys, it exists. What, tentacle porn? We knew this. No, no, no. Amy Adams fucking uh, an elephant octopus alien. I totally understand the fact that Morty thought they wouldn't notice because he's Morty, he's dumb. I just think it was weird that he was like, their only hope for survival. It was was a dude who went into space, so if Buzz Armstrong went up there or... (laughs) <laughs> buzz aspirin or it's actually buzz anvil <laughs> <laughs> buzz anvil. i okay i really liked that joke a lot i got buzz aldrin and neil armstrong i, I kind of combined them, but <laughs> if neil motrin went up there and didn't come up, <laughs> they would be like wow this is weird let's send another rocket up they wouldn't be like well i guess we have no hope let's just kill each other i mean to be fair it didn't really help our world much we're still racist as fuck but I don't think space would stop us from being racist. I guess it makes sense that when they found out there was others out there, it does make sense that they're like, all right, well, let's fucking kill others. We don't have to hate each other. We can hate them. What I don't understand is there are snakes now coming back in time to try to kill Morty, but simultaneously, when they do like the Terminator cutaway of the war with the machines and stuff, they ha- the humans have a flag with Morty's face on it, Signifying that he's, like, the savior. Not necessarily the savior. It, there might be one side that views him as the one who opened our eyes, and the other side views him as the evil alien. And No, he, he, he's like, Snake John Connor. That, I, thought that was the, I thought that was the whole point. I have not seen Terminator. What? Wait, so yeah. you haven't seen Terminator and you're arguing with Brandon about it? I went to the Universal Studios ride with Terminator. Terminator isn't part of that! What, have you been on the... It's not really a ride, it's like a show. Have you been to it? Yes! It's close. It's, there's like a vague plot thing there. Okay, you might be you might be right that you have like seen that, but you know what I've seen? The Terminator movies! <laughs> wow, your voice is going to be clipping like a bitch on that screen. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, Dan. <laughs> sorry me, I edit it first. Point being, how have you not seen Terminator? Yeah, let's just talk about this now for an hour. No, but like so many of the references are Terminator references just haven't seen it so i'm sure there is plenty in this episode i didn't get i thought it was funny though okay so there's two things i didn't understand one was that of like what the fuck are like the snakes going back in time for 
Well, no, I understood why the android snakes are going back in time because that's the plot of Terminator. But also, why when they found that like the snakes hadn't finished the time machine, did they then decide to help the snakes finish the time machine? Well, what Rick said was we bring it back in time earlier. Like, it didn't make a ton of sense, if I'm honest, but they make it go back even earlier so that they're even dumber about it. And then, yeah. So that the time police will get involved? But now we're at the point where Rick and Morty can jump and travel through time. So why do they need the time police to get involved? So here's the thing. I don't think that we're going to stay this way. I think they're just going to drop the time travel thing and they're not going to address it again. Which I don't love, but I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, probably. I did also, I loved how when the, the snake that Morty returns to the planet is landing. Uh, how the, the battleship that's there to collect him is called the SS. <laughs> oh, what a dumb fucking joke. I love that. <laughs> it's so bad, but so I didn't good. I that, but that is fucking funny. Also, uh, on the Wikia page for this episode, one of the fun facts is the fascist posters are snake versions of the Nazi posters used during World War II, and all I want to say is no fucking shit. <laughs> Those swastikas? Those are Nazi symbols? I did appreciate that Snake Hitler still has Blondie as his dog. Hitler had a dog? He had a painting of his dog above his mantle, and it's the same dog that, like, Hitler actually had. Blondie. Oh, right. I learned that from Always Sunny when they found a painting. They're like, this is an original Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I have not seen that episode. Also related to this, uh, in the uh, 1985 Nazi snake planet, the bust of Hitler that was in the lab is actually a Aberdolf Linkler, but a snake version. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's awesome. I appreciated the callback. <laughs> it's one of those shows that rewards multiple viewings. There's usually some funny callback or some like weird joke like in the background, like a snake being with a, what was that? Uh, Joseph, that's still your favorite joke of the entire show. The oh, snake the getting blood pressure thing. <laughs> yup. <laughs> It's not funny, it just really tickles me for some reason. I cannot explain it, but it is my favorite joke in Rick and Morty. No one on Earth would agree with me, but I love it. In Season 2, Episode 1, when Jerry hits a deer, they rush to the vet, and it cuts to, like, somebody taking the snake's blood pressure, and it's just the blood pressure <laughs> oh, yeah. around the snake. I cannot explain why I find it so funny. <laughs> This is one of my favorite moments in Rick and Morty. No, that is an amazing joke in Rick and Morty. It is, but it does not deserve the title of funniest joke in the series. But it has captured it, it for you. Yes. Also, I just realized something. The snake coming back in time to rescue Jerry while he's hanging off the ship means that Jerry somehow plays a part in the snake planet's survival. How? Huh. Good point, good point. My guess... Honestly, I got nothing. I have nothing <laughs> now. They did the bare minimum to, to make any of the time travel make sense. I don't even think they did the bare minimum on that. Which is fine, because it, it was funny. I'm going to take a second to give a shout out to the writer of this episode, because it's not a first time writer. This is James Siciliano, who previously wrote Morty's Mind Blowers. Okay. And uh, was one of the writers who I got a chance to meet at the uh, Season 3 rap party. Oh, cool. Yeah, shout out to him. Also, I have another shout out this week. Shout out to my friend from work, Gabe, who literally posted our fucking Rictal Beast episode into my fucking work group chat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gabe, um, respect. Please post this one. We're going to be dropping some re really fucked up statements in here. Toby, what's the name of the company you work for? <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to your boss. What's his uh, first name, last name, and home address? First of all, it's a woman, you sexist fuck. Second of all, <laughs> no, I'm not telling you that. Fine, just, just her phone number then. <laughs> also a uh, fun story i was talking to my boss's son let's see this was like a couple weeks ago or this was right back after we did the rictal beast episode and i happened to talk about this podcast well the next day my boss let's let hey i listen to your podcast really great stuff 
to which I then <laughs> looked on our page and realized the last episode we posted was the Rictal Beast. Mm-hmm. We talk about <laughs> Gaspar Mala and his. Why did it sound like you were gargling jizz? <laughs> that's that's the correct pronunciation of his name. Isn't that how Gaspar Nau directs his films? Nah. <laughs> But yes, point being, let's hope this does not destroy our professional lives. You work in Hollywood, it's not going to destroy shit. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> I work in a place that I could get fired for if they hear this. Like, I've mentioned to co-workers, like, I didn't mention it to them, it just, like, came up in conversation. And like, oh, you run a podcast? What's it called? I'm like, no, nope, can't do it, can't tell you, because then you'll have to kill me. Also, besides Keegan Michael Key, I don't think there's really many guest stars on this episode. First off, I was really hoping the woman they I got the woman the original lady from the Terminator movie. I guess they didn't, but what Linda Hamilton? No, I don't think they did. They got Linda Hamilton to just go into a mic for an hour. That would be an amazing waste of talent. <laughs> Have you guys seen Deadpool two? Yeah, I was yep. just gonna bring that up. The invisible guy was Brad Pitt. <laughs> Um, yeah, and he's which, on screen for like 0.5 seconds which he he's liter- electrocuted. He literally did that just because he thought it would be hilarious to have Brad Pitt in a movie where he has so little screen time. It is an extremely funny joke. Also, I did not realize this, but the time cop is named Schlee My Pants. Well, if that isn't some OG Rick and Morty bullshit, I don't know what is. The time cop from what? From Rick and Morty. Oh, I wasn't sure if you were talking about Deadpool still, and I was like, I don't remember a time cop. Are you talking about the one played by um, Michael Key? Yeah, Keegan Michael Key. Yeah. I'm sad that Keegan he didn't get Michael Key back as well, but I'm sure he's busy working on the next thing to terrify all of us. Although, shout out to his other, a show he's executive producing that's coming out soon, which is about Nazi hunters. Oh, I thought you were gonna mention Twilight Zone. Oh no, I don't want to talk about that. You don't like it? No, I did not like it. <laughs> We're off the fucking rails, I'll cut this, but, like, the problem I have is anytime I see him on screen, I'm expecting something funny. (laughs) It really throws me when he's playing the role of Rod fucking Sterling being like, Welcome to the Twilight Zone. Where's the joke? Where's Key? Welcome to the Twilight Zone. Here's my anger translator, Luther. (laughs) (laughs) Man, wasn't that some existential bullshit? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I do need to leave. It. <laughs> no, you, you're leaving that. this. You're leaving this in. <laughs> I want to make you upset, Joseph. And I have to say, this episode I think solidified that this season has been the weakest season so far by a lot. Personally, this was the one that solidified it for you. Yes, and the reason is when I watch a Rick and Morty episode, I want to see some fucked up existential jokes i want to see some really hilarious creative jokes i want to see a plot like a sci-fi plot that's really interesting and maybe even has like a little moral for example the um mind parasite episode total rick all in that episode there through the mind parasites being found out because they can only create good memories the moral and we might have discussed this on a previous podcast but the moral at its core was even your best friends ha- you'll have bad memories with Oh boy, do I. Yeah. <laughs> Not like we needed the show to tell us that, but those are like the things that I really search for in an episode. Also just like the sheer silliness of Justin Roiland. But this season to me has been has been very weak on plot in the sense that there hasn't been a good sci-fi plot that really blew my mind, like the detoxification episode. I'm going to hold off on agreeing with you about this being the weakest season because I do, but extenuating circumstance, which is news that I was going to like save a little bit, Rick and Morty has announced that the second half of this season is coming out in uh, 2020. So this season is not done yet. They're going to have five more episodes in 2020. I really thought you were going to say, I'm going to hold off on agreeing with you until we've stopped recording. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I would violently disagree with Toby while we are recording, even if it would would support you, Joseph. Honestly, though, I think the humor has been even weaker than it normally is. Like, there have been some really funny shit, but I rewatched an episode from season two, and just, like, the number of amazing jokes just land, like, one after the other. Like, boom, 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 boom. Like, in multiple scenes are like that. And in this and in, in this latest season, I would say apart from the first episode, the humor has been a little more sparse to me. Here's what I liked. Okay, episode one 
we got some very Rick and Morty existential death crystal, you little monster, I thought you were masturbating. Episode 2, we got some good Rick character development. Episode 3, let's leave that one alone. Episode 4, not much <laughs> Episode 5, not much happened in terms of character development, plot development. I did really love Jerry's story. Jerry's pride and somehow, against all odds, surviving a fucking plane crash by just jumping onto a tree. That would not fucking work, I think. Hey, uh, Mythbusters, if you're listening, I need you to try this. Oh, what, you don't think crashing into a tree at 400 miles an hour would would kill you? Look, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. His fingers are bleeding profusely. They would be doing so much more than that. His fucking tendons would have snapped before <laughs> that happened. I am going to agree that, like, so far this does, to me, feel like the weakest season thus far. I've rewatched episodes from season three. Which, for me, like, before this was the weakest season. Season 3 has some amazing episodes throughout. Vindicators 3 is amazing. Whirly Durly Conspiracy is amazing. Rick Shank Redemption is amazing. Morty's Mind Blowers is amazing. You have so many of these episodes which just blew my mind. Ha. Well, throughout, and season 4, I haven't quite had that. I've had some moments that were like that. I thought that... I would say the first episode of this season has gotten the closest to doing that. 100%. Although I did really like the second episode of the season. Because they managed to make an emotionally resonant plot over a storyline about Rick pooping. So, you would say that this is like the weakest of all the seasons for you? Easily, yes. I would not say by much. I would say by quite a lot. <laughs> it sounds like there's a trend of it getting weaker, which concerns me. I would put the first two episodes on par with season three. Yes, yeah, I would too. I put f number one on par with season three. Uh, number two, maybe not as much. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, I, I did really, really like the A story, but the B story was not as good. Sorry, what was the B story again? I, I honestly do not remember. <laughs> exactly. It was Jerry building the app. Oh, yeah. Has he ever done that before? No, first time. <laughs> For me, the season rankings go, season two is the number one spot, followed by season one, followed by three, followed by four. I think season one, since it was just getting its legs, was the weakest. I don't know. Nah, I man. Rick Potion number nine, Me Seeks and Destroy, Anatomy Park. It's true. I was starting to think in, in those terms, Joseph, like, oh, what? How, how good was season one really? And then I rewatched a lot of it recently, and it was so good. Well, it has been a while, to be fair, but you have a point. Rick Potion number nine is still the most fucked up episode as far as I'm concerned. I know that you two disagree with me. I know you, yours is car battery. Rick Potion number nine is the most fucked up. Car battery has the, uh, most, has, fucked has the most fucked up moment. Rick Potion number nine is the most fucked up in Rick and Morty terms. Well, it's just like... It, it's the It establishes so well, like, the levels of, like, fucking with the sci-fi. Our solution to this is to go to a universe where we fixed it and died. That was also a brilliant fucking way to introduce the infinite number of realities into the Rick and Morty canon. And also, I think we can all agree that, like, that episode really took Rick and Morty to another level for me. Because at first it started out as, like, a funny sitcom. Like, the the episodes always end with Rick acknowledging he, it's in a TV show. Ha ha. And then at the end of that one, they're just like, no, fuck you. Yeah. Like, everyone watching, fuck you, this is serious. Which, like, the ability of a show that's as funny as Rick and Morty to do that is amazing. It's, it's, it's really, it's like one of the main reasons why I love this show. Yeah, season one and season two are, are both up there. Season three is next down, and then season four, I'm still waiting to see how they pull it together. Because I know they can do better. I don't want you guys to be right, but you kind of are. <laughs> and look... I've still enjoyed this season quite a lot. Like, I'll probably rewatch every episode, well, except for maybe the third. Although I I kind of want to rewatch it now that Dan said that it, that it was one of his favorites from the season. He's wrong. Or... He's just objectively wrong. <laughs> I agree, but I'm still curious what he found in it cuz I watched it like one and a half times and anyway, this doesn't take away from how much fun I'm having this season, but it has been a little bit of a bummer to me. I don't know, I felt like a lot of it hasn't lived up to... The hype. Yeah. Yeah. As we all sadly agree with each other. Let's see. 
So I do have a story for you guys. Not sure if we'll leave this in, but I do have a story for you guys. Um, we ran out of toilet paper yesterday. <laughs> okay, this is a good start. Talking about like, oh, Toby, you'd let your mom die if you couldn't tell another poop joke. This isn't a joke, this is a real life experience, and I would thank you not to disparage my experience. I can literally hear you smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what happened. We were out of toilet paper. I didn't realize how low we were. I have since had an Go argument on. with Tyler over the definition of the word low. To me, it's like if you have a roll and a half left, that's when you say we're low. If there's half a roll left, you say we need toilet paper right the fuck now. Anyway, so I ran out of toilet paper. I really had to take a shit. I thought, I'm like, I could either go to my friend's place and they'll make fun of me, or I can go to Walmart, which is about a 30 minute walk, buy toilet paper, walk back and take a shit. So my pride got the better of me. I shit my pants on the way, stopped <laughs> at a bookstore. Wait, wait, to, to? To Walmart, to Walmart. Wow, because I was hoping you were going to say that you shat yourself on the way back and then realize that you could have just gone in the Walmart bathroom. <laughs> no, no, no. That was the plan, if I'm honest. But no, no. I shit my pants, then went into a bookstore on the way to Walmart and had to throw out my underwear <laughs> because it was gross. What are we talking? Are we talking like a little squirt, a whole log? Like what, what's going little on? little squirt. It was like, it was a small, lo it was like a prairie dog that didn't get all the way back in the hole before it sealed shut. The prairie dog got his head cut off. <laughs> um, Decapitated prairie dog. Or turtle, I guess. <laughs> okay, I have a story that kind of goes in line with this, actually, that happened to me recently. Go on. So, I didn't shit my pants. Boring. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, every time I've ever shot my pants in my life, which has happened more than I'm willing to admit, it's been because it's come by surprise. Like, I didn't think that it was going to happen. I didn't think that we were at that stage. <laughs> Who and... is that not true for, though? <laughs> and then, no like, all of a sudden... <laughs> when they're prepared for it. <laughs> That's the you've fucking never... point! <laughs> you've never been, like... You've never been in a, having a fight with your girlfriend, and you're like, you know what? And then you just shit your pants while staring her dead in the eyes? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you know what I mean of just, like, you never... It's always, like, a so you fart that... You feel it coming at all. There was no warning. It's always, like, a fart that you shouldn't have trusted or something like that. <laughs> where... <laughs> you betrayed me! <laughs> so, I had the first time in my life where I had to shit so badly... That even with all my focus trying to prevent that from happening, I did not know if I was going to be able to hold it in. To the point that I was sitting on my foot as I sped home at 80 miles an hour on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> I wait, was. Wait. So your <laughs> yeah. left heel was in your ass and your <laughs> <Yes>. right foot <laughs> was, and on, was, was pushing the gas pedal into the floor. Oh my god, that's so dangerous. I was seven minutes away from home, and I was praying to the god that I don't believe in to please <laughs> let me make it. I did. I made it. End of story. Mazel tov. I really, I really, was this when you had ghost? What, what like, ha did I have ghosts at this point? Yes. Yeah, this happened this last weekend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I really wish when you ran in, she saw you and just, like, fucking mauled you. And, like, oh, just you down long enough that you just, <laughs> just, like, smacked me in the nuts with her gigantic paw. So I just crumpled to the floor and then just couldn't hold it in anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, wow. that did not happen. But she did run at me and I was just like, nope, nope, stay. <laughs> so now that we've all told a disgusting bathroom story about, about what ourselves. The, you haven't. You didn't. Yeah, or no, 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 now that you both have, I guess I have to say one. So I don't have a good shat myself story. Why didn't we do this on the Rick shit episode? <laughs> well, I guess because I hadn't shit my pants yet. I guess neither of you had. Yeah. All right, sorry, Toby, carry on. This happened when I was about 
probably, I don't remember the exact age, but it was like a little too old to be pissing the bed. But I was probably like 12. So what happened was go to bed and then I wake up in the morning and I go downstairs to my bathroom. Like, and I start taking a massive piss. And then halfway in the middle of it, I wake up and I'm in my own fucking bed. Well. <laughs> to this day, that is the clearest dream I've ever this had. This is why you never piss in a dream. <laughs> if I had been like completely lucid, I don't think I would have noticed. The details were that good. And then I wake up and I'm in bed mid piss. And at that point, I think I was just like, Ugh, I can't stop. And then I finished. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hold it in and run to the bathroom? I mean, I had very little left. Have you ever tried to stop mid-piss? It's not easy. What's another drop in the bucket? This was probably, like, the hugest piss I had ever taken at that point in my life. It was, like, that much. So that fucking happened to me. It's ironic that Toby, who always will just fart and go, Oh, I shit myself, is the one without the shit himself story. Oh, I mean, I shit myself. I just don't have a good story behind it. The only time oh, don't I worry, I'm sure it's there. Just like, oh, I'm food poison, and I'm vomiting, and also now pooping. Don't you want to join us in the pooping? <laughs> I didn't, but I was forced <laughs> to by my own body. Jesus. So... Rick and Morty. I already said this, but you gave me shit for liking poop jokes, and you fucking took us on a 20-minute, like, poop ourselves tirade. This was non-fiction here, okay? This was a near and dear story. Your Pulitzer Prize is in the mail. <laughs> so, Rick and Morty something. Uh, the IMDb average ratings of these episodes from this season. The average for Rattlestar Rick Lactica is 9.1 out of 10. To compare, the first episode of this season was a 9.2. Wait, Joseph, what is your favorite episode this season? Was it episode 4? I think episode 2. Episode 2 is your favorite? Seriously? It's very close between 1 and 2, but episode 2 is my favorite because of the ending. I love the sad endings. I love the moments when we get some very real moments from Rick. So, to rank my episodes for this season so far, we've got... Two, one, five, four, three. So that would be poop episode, death crystal, uh, snake episode, uh, dragon episode, and the other one. I love how you talk about it like it's a problem child. So how about you guys? You know, I think episode one is my favorite from this season. Don't get me wrong, I really, really liked episode two. I thought episode two, the A story of episode two was brilliant. Like one of the best I've seen in Rick and Morty in a long time. Um, especially because of the ending, but I felt that the first episode was overall funnier and quite a bit tighter. Um, like the, the B story in, in episode two was not as good in my opinion. Well, yeah. Like to rank them one, two, probably four, five, three, I think. Maybe I should rewatch the episode from last night, but nothing from last night made me laugh nearly as hard as like, oh, Shadow Jacker. Oh, actually, no, you're right. I, I would put four above five. You're right. Uh, two, one, four, five, three. Uh, At least I'm not into <laughs> shit play. Let's fuck woolly mammoths. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you fucking nailed that, that like, stupid Justin Roiland voice. One thing I want to say since I wasn't on last episode, like, I understand that networks make you bleep shit, but that really ruined the scene. I couldn't tell half of what they were saying because of all the fucking bleeps. I figured it out, but, like, no, there were moments when I had to rewind because I'm like, really? what are they saying? I could tell, just... tell every time. I actually thought it made it funnier. Particularly with Shadow Jacker, I couldn't quite tell what he was all about. What You know, what's his story? What's his motivation? Where does he come from? Oh, God, I just saw the staff. <laughs> also, wait, can we actually talk about this for a little while? Because there are certain comedies where the swearing is bleep. And sometimes I feel like it actually somehow does make it funnier. I don't know why. I don't even know if I'm right about that. But it's just a feeling that I've had watching, like, American Puritan TV. It's like, oh, you can't say fuck. Well, occasionally <laughs> it makes it funnier, yes, but... But I'm more just asking right now, like, is this something that either of you have thought about or experienced before? 100%. Like, it honestly, I mean, my go-to example for this is the Family Guy bit where they took uh, Christian Bale's freak out on set 
and dubbed Peter in, like, responding to it. Because they bleep out everything that Christian Bale says, and I think they actually added bleeps that were unnecessary. And it makes it so much funnier to me. Now, and there's times when you can bleep and make it better, like if you've ever seen The Count Censored. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. If not, I just bleep the on spiders on the wall. <laughs> I bleep the cobwebs in the hall. I bleep the candles on the shelf. When I'm alone, I bleep myself. Uh, but yeah, to, to top off the uh, rankings of the episodes, I'm going to go episode one first. It's sort of a tie for me between four and five for second place. Because while I thought that the A story was stronger in four, I thought that the B story was terrible. Meanwhile, Rattlestar Rattlestar Galactica, I thought that both the A and B story were, on average, better. What was the B story in 4? Uh, Jerry and the Cat. Oh, right. Yeah. Which, like, I thought that was bad, but the dragon storyline was good. Meanwhile, in Rattlestar Galactica, neither of the storylines were as good as the dragon storyline for me. But I thought that both 4 and 5 average out to around the same. But I think the B story, like, you know, the B story is never supposed to be as good. It yes, was... agreed. I think the Jerry Floating B story was an excellent B story. It was like... Yeah, no, that was fantastic B story. I don't know how Rick didn't see that going horribly wrong. Because it's Rick. Because he doesn't give a shit. But, yeah, so after that, it's episode two, and then uh, the episode we shall not speak of. Sorry, Katie. <laughs> Oh, God. We haven't really discussed the episode itself much, but that I'll, I'll be honest, it's kind of a clusterfuck. Well, it's its very hard to discuss a lot of the scenes that are just... True. For me, like, with the old man in the seat, the old man in the seat should be, should be like, the standard I hold, like, Rick and Morty to, like, when they're not excelling. That's how good they should be on average. That shouldn't be, like, the better episode. Honestly, the the A story in that episode for me was, like, one of the best par with, like... The A story is brilliant. Wow, look at you. Graduated with a master's in film from AFI, and you're calling a cartoon about a man being defensive over where he poops. Brilliant. My favorite movie of the year is about a kid who's in the Hitler Youth. What's your point? <laughs> <laughs> well, this was a good half season. This was, I would say, you know... It is unfortunate that it was not as good as the others, but it's still far and above better than, like, Frasier. I pooped on this season quite a bit during this podcast episode, but I'm pretty pretentious with the television I watch. I don't devote a, <laughs> a lot of time <laughs> to, to a lot of shows. And by pretentious, I just mean, like, if something isn't... If, if I don't find something to be amazing, then I just won't continue watching it. And I'm... St- I still love watching Rick and Morty, so I, I do still really like the show, and I'm glad I got to see this season, because it it yeah. was hilarious, and there was a lot of great shit in there. Sometimes literally. Do either of you have any final thoughts? I don't think they're going to make it for 2020. I think 2021. I think I think they will. They're already working on it. They already have the script. I'm dubious, just based on their history of how long it takes them to do shit. Very excited to see what happens, what this next half season brings. Thank you for listening. This has been the Daily Squanch, our non-daily Rick and Morty podcast. You can find us on... Fuck, where are we? SoundCloud? iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube. Or you can break into Joseph's house and make him recite it for you at gunpoint. Yes. Um, you can also just steal my computer. I have files saved on it. Well, thanks for listening. And we'll see you in a year, maybe. Or longer.